Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray. I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter postcard for our Language of Flowers box. I don't have one to show you because we like to do these projects together and it gives you guys insight on how I like to approach a painting and a composition and all of that kind of stuff. We have Michael here, my husband, working the cameras. Hello. And just so you guys know, in every single one of our boxes, we do a watercolor postcard that is sometimes pre-addressed and sometimes pre-stamped. And we do that so then most of the time we send it to um, someone who just needs a little extra love or support. Um, sometimes we send it to the same person or sometimes we leave the address blank so you can send it someone special to you. And for this month, we are going to paint a Snapdragon and that is because Snapdragons are considered a symbol of feminine strength and grace, and they are often given as a show of respect or admiration. So I thought it'd be fun if we painted Snapdragons and then you thought about someone in your life that kind of fits that description, and then they just get a beautiful hand-painted card in the mail, just showing appreciation. Lovely. Right? Okay, so I have all the paint colors from the box at my disposal. I'm not sure which colors I'm using yet. I have all my brushes ready to go. And also I bought a bouquet yesterday and it happens to have a Snapdragon in it. And it's not super bloomy, but that's okay. Yeah. It gives that's, us at least a little bit of shape. That's fine. And um, what we're going for here is just very loose gestural um, Snapdragon shape. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I like to approach Snapdragons on this six by nine, and then we'll move it to the postcard, okay? So I just wanna point out a couple of things first, and then we'll get to painting. When you look at a Snapdragon, it's on a thick stalk, and the flowers come out individually along its side. The thing that we have to pay attention to is that this stalk is three-dimensional, which means that there are flowers on the sides, on the back, and in the front. So we're not looking at painting a thick stalk and then flowers on either side, because that is not how it actually is, right? They go all the way around. The other thing to pay attention to is that the blooms on the bottom are larger and then they gradually get smaller as they go to the top where it kind of ends up being these small green kind of like pods. Buds. Buds. Thank you. <laughs> these little buds along the top. Okay. Now the floral shape itself and there are different um, stages of blooming. So sometimes they're just rounded like this is starting to come out from the bud but it's still just round and tight. These ones are still pretty round, but they're kind of elongated and they have like a little fold right here. And then these ones, you can see that they're starting to open up. And I'm gonna like just press these a little bit more so you can see what they look like more opened up, okay? They, they get really papery. Like if that was an older one, the lower flowers get big and billowy and papery. Yes, so we are going to, when we recreate our Snapdragon, we're gonna think about all of those things as we're painting this. Now, I'm not gonna paint this exact one because I want mine to have a lot more flowers on it and be a different color, but this is just a good um, visual for you guys to have as we're painting these. And good vibes. And who doesn't like fresh flowers? I mean, come on. They're just lovely to have around. So I'm gonna start with my round six, but you can use whatever brush you feel most comfortable using. I'm gonna grab some magenta. And I like a really peachy blush color personally, but these come in all different colors, so just use whatever you feel comfortable. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of yellow and mix that in with my magenta to get this really gorgeous kind of corally color, maybe more like a salmon. And I'm going to basically think about, um, they can be going up, they could be going down, but they're all kind of this like roundish oval shape, okay? So I'm going to just start by kind of like round oval, round oval, and notice that they're getting a little bit smaller as I work my way up. And then maybe now they start to kind of poke out and notice, I'm saying this to myself, I did them on each side and that is not true. So I need to do one in the front here. Okay, and then let's let these kind of blooms go here. And now I'm gonna take my green 
And then I'm gonna imagine the stock going in between these. And then it curves, see how it kind of moves? And then now I can put in those little buds and then touch green to the base of some of these because you can see that they kind of separate and have like little leaves around the base of it. So they're called snapdragons because their base kind of looks like a little dragon. Uh huh. And you can squeeze them and they'll open and close, which is the most fun. Yes. Their scientific uh, genus is Antarinum, which means snout. Oh, really? The little snout flowers. <laughs> that's cute. And then what I like to do, that's such a cute little <laughs> snout. And then um, you can leave them soft like this or sometimes just for fun. Like, because if you look, they, they have different colors going on. So right at that base, you can add a little bit more color. Maybe you want to do yellow instead. You can do yellow kind of maybe that center is opening up a little bit and you can see a little bit of yellow. Just kind of like drop, drop in some different colors. Let it be a little bit loose. And then the very last thing I like to do is I want to give a little bit more hint of its shape and the little folds that you would see. So I'm gonna take my dagger and then I'm gonna just kind of like draw around it. So sometimes it kind of like that little bloom, you see this kind of uneven edge? Yes. So it kind of like widens up at the top. And I'll mainly do that on the bottom ones because the top ones are still pretty tight. Okay, just like that. That's a little snapdragon. So that is a good like basic start. And then um, I wanna show you the illustration I did for the book, Language of Flowers. This one is definitely way more in bloom, <laughs> I would say. A lot more flowers, which for me I think is a little bit more um, playful. So when I go to my postcard, I'm gonna take this and then like turn it up a notch and do a ton more blossoms on it, okay? But know that there is variation in all of them. You're, it's okay if your Snapdragon is a different colored, has different amounts of blooms on them, um, is longer, all of that kind of stuff. What if you just painted all buds, just a bunch of green dots all the way up? instead of any blue <laughs> You could do that. It would look like a Brussels sprout. <laughs> it would. So um, whenever I approach a postcard and I'm thinking about, okay, I wanna make sure my layout is good, I'm gonna turn it, I think about, do I want it horizontal or do I want it vertical? Because these are long, skinny flowers, I wanna put my postcard vertical, which means standing up. So then I can really kind of accentuate with that length. If I were to turn it this way, my things would have to be pretty short and I would have to do a lot more of them to kind of fill up that space. Now I'm gonna think about the curve of them and um, our brain is gonna want them to be perfectly straight, but I don't. we don't want that because that is not how they are. They have movement, they have a life. And I want it to feel like it has slightly more energy, where if you want it to be very static and still, that's when you do straight lines. But let's have, I'm gonna have some of them curve this way. I'm gonna switch up their lengths. Okay. And this is just basic. We're not going, we're not doing anything crazy here. I'm gonna darken my line so you guys can see it better. But if you're sketching at home, don't do your lines this dark. I guess you could eat the flower part. Really? Yeah, that's what the internet says, and the internet never is wrong. <laughs> I always trust everything the internet says. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, I'll do four. You guys can do however many as you want. Also, they have these like little kind of long skinny leaves. So I'm gonna kind of put those in. I'm gonna lightly erase because those lines like that watercolor is just not gonna be able to cover those. So at least you guys could see what I was doing and now I need to soften them so it doesn't take away from my painting. Okay. All right. Maybe 
gonna move this here. Is that better? Okay, I'm gonna use my six, but this is a smaller postcard, so if you have a smaller brush you would rather use, feel free. And then um, this kind of like ovally shape, remember that the stock is three dimensional, so there's some behind it. They can stick up, they can stick out. Allow yourself to add some water and then do lighter value ones as well. Okay. And then for fun, we can drop in some stronger color, whatever, whatever color you like. It just gives it a little bit extra something, you know? And then while it's wet, I like to do this stem while it's wet because I like it when the green bleeds a little bit. So I'm just gonna basically just work around the blossoms, letting them kind of touch. And then I do the dots at the top. And the Brussels sprouts, you gotta add the Brussels sprouts. And we're doing the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I notice a lot that you say you like letting the green stem bleed into the flowers. Why is that, do you think? Is there just stylistic preference? It's stylistic preference, one, but two, it's actually the green bleeding into the blossom can be this bud okay. that's opened up. Gotcha, gotcha. And actually, if you look, a lot of the times where the petals come out of a green area, there's a hint of green there, too. So I just feel like I like it. <laughs> and let's say you do the green and it's just too strong you can lift up some of that green and just kind of lighten it. It won't erase it, but it will soften. Okay, that's one. And I'm not gonna do the detail lines of the little floofy at the end till, I mean, till the end. So I'm just gonna keep going. Let's do like a full on like bright pink. So it's kind of like this oval shape and it's okay if it's not perfectly rounded okay and let's drop in a little bit of color here and there you can do it at the base or at the top love that one it's a good color isn't it yeah Now, if you don't like your green bleeding, then wait for it to dry and then add your green stem and just work around it. Same same thing, but it would just cut down on that green bleeding throughout. But I just feel like it creates this beautiful softness, if you can see that. Yes. So, I'm a fan. Sometimes in real life, I'm surprised by how vibrant and saturated flower colors can be. Mm -hmm. They look fake sometimes. Yes. Also, Snapdragon um, stalks are obviously very thick. I just love thin lines though, so I narrow out the stalks on my own work. But if you're trying to recreate like more realistically what it is that we're painting, you would want a thicker stalk. I just like thin ones. I think it just makes it feel um, like a little bit more elegant. I don't know. I just like thin lines. It just hit me, Sarah. The what? real one looks like a big asparagus with tiny Brussels sprouts. Yes! <laughs> that is what that looks like. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do like a more, ooh, like the color we did our iris, which is like a magenta violet mixture. Yes. So quick. Oh yeah, this is a, these are just fast. Just be loose with it. If you're paying yourself by the hour and you want to get the most out of your time, <laughs> paint a bunch of Snapdragons, man. You I mean, these out. they can be, if you're going for realism, they can be complicated, but yeah. I like the looseness of them. I think, I think loose versions of them are just so lovely. I, I, that's my kind of favorite 
one of my favorite flowers to paint. And this was one that I was painting um, while they were doing a photo shoot. And I was just like, ah, I just love flowers. Did you paint hollyhocks in your book? Um, no, hollyhocks was not one of the flowers in the book. I feel like you'd like those. They have that loose quality that you could kind of paint quick about them. Well, I have done a hollyhock project for Let's Make Art, actually. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> so, if you guys are interested in painting hollyhocks, which it, they do grow on a stalk similar to how these do, and they're beautiful. Um, they're really fun to paint, too. Give a rough guess. How many videos are you up to? Let's make art. Over three? I mean, I've done at least one a week since 2018. Dang. So. <laughs> Around 300 minimum, right? Yeah, and that does it. Like, there's some bonus in there. and Okay, now I'm adding the stock. Let's add the buds. This one might have gotten a little too long, but that's okay. Okay, I know I say it about every one, but that one's not my favorite. <laughs> and then now what I'm going to do on this last one, I'm going to make it more like this color, like more of a peachy pink. But, I mean, this is your painting. There's even some like white and yellow ones. But I do need some fresh magenta to get that peachy pink back. And maybe I'll have this one, the bloom start not as low, so then I can get some green along the bottom. So let's have them kind of start here. And it's okay if they overlap with other ones. I kind of run into this one. Let's drop in a little bit of, I'm going to drop in a little yellow. And you can use your two or your dagger for the stem. Sorry, I'm not completing my thoughts here because I'm focused. Okay. And actually, let's use our dagger to do those long, skinny leaves. I'm going to put a paper underneath this so I don't get my table messed up. And then wherever you feel like it could use a little extra space, like maybe right here, we can do another one. I'm trying to decide if I want it coming out of this one or this one. I'm going to have it come out of this one. And then if you want to do like an extra on some of these stems, you could do like a darker value edge on some of them just to give that a slight hint of dimension. Okay. Then now let's do our little detail lines. Now these are so tiny that we're not looking for a lot. I basically just kind of want to shape some of them to hint that there's like a little fluttery edge. Just remember to use the same hue so I wouldn't be using peachy pink on the dark purple for these detail lines. You know what I mean? And I like to draw sometimes with my brush, especially with the dagger. It has such a fine point that I can kind of go outside what I've painted because then they can really see it. Gives it kind of like a sketchy kind of ink and wash look, which I'm a fan of personally. And basically I'm just kind of doing wavy lines that kind of 
get a little bit white wider at the bottom This actually was going to be one of the projects, um, like full page projects, and then I read what it stood for, and I was just like, you know what, that would be perfect for our Let's Make Art Matter. Let's do that instead. Again, I'm just kind of like putting in some wavy lines on some of these. They're not super detailed. It's just like a hint of the shape. And that's it. It's beautiful. That's our Snapdragon card. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Yes. I mean, the background is, um, personally, I like a clean white background. I do. It's just, but that's stylistic preference. So if you don't care for that, one thing that you could do is before you start painting them, you could do a light blue wash with the and have it kind of transition to white. So you can start with like blue here, transition to a really, really light blue. So then that way all of this gorgeous color would still show up, but you would have something along the top. You could also do a beautiful border, or maybe this is where you write a little note. Okay? Love it. Um, I really hope you take the time to do this. Let's Make Art Matter is probably one of my favorite things that we do here. And I just think that there is so much value in letting people know that you care about them. And art has that power to do that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not about this frame-worthy painting. It's about making something for somebody and letting them know that you're thinking about them. That is it. That is, that is the why. That is what we're doing here. If there is someone you know that you think could benefit from a Let's Make Art Matter card, we have a nomination form on our website. Just go to letsmakeart.com, scroll to the bo bottom. There should be a nominate button there. And um, I just wanna thank you guys for taking the time to do this. We get some wonderful thank you notes from people who have received postcards. And I just wanna say, it is not us. It is you guys. It is the people who take the time to actually paint something and put it in the mail, which is a very vulnerable thing to do. And um, if people appreciate the kindness and the generosity, that does not come from us. That comes from you. And so I just wanna say thank you for doing that and making people's day for doing that. So. Thank you for paying with me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.